Welcome to the Discord Mead series. We're in number, or I guess Discord Mead number seven. Uh, we are here to talk about a very tropical, very fruity, forward, approachable mead that has been designed by my friend Robert here from the Discord. Um, we He basically took the reins from our previous Discord series, number six, and he said, all right, we're going to make something new. And I kind of made the comments. I want it to be approachable for people. And so uh, Robert kind of designed between himself and some uh, advice or just kind of back and forth conversation with the rest of the Discord, this awesome mead recipe. So Robert, welcome to this. I hope that tasting is not a disappointment because as the author of the recipe, I want to make you proud. Well, it's going to be good. Thanks for having me, and thanks for letting me be a part of this. So we were talking about, too, I, it's really fun to, to see you in person, because on Discord, sometimes we don't, I mean, I don't get to see your face. Very rarely do we get these moments. So it's very fun just to have a real look and see, like, you know, uh, I'm not just talking to a person behind a, a computer, so it's kind of fun. Let's talk about this recipe for a second before we dive too deep. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the screen for anyone who's interested. It is very approachable. And I think you did a fantastic job of, of uh, keeping it approachable for any mead maker. So talk to us about it a little bit. What prompted you to go with pineapple and mango and strawberry as far as fruits specifically? So, yeah, so we chose the, uh, the pineapple and the mango because um, I remembered on my honeymoon that I really enjoyed having all of those tropical drinks down there. And with it being summertime, that's kind of where my brain went to. Um, so I thought those would be good. And then having the strawberries in there to kind of back up those flavors, uh, that would be nice. And, and, and we just together collaboratively picked the uh, uh, fun honey. So I don't think it's something uh, anyone's played with before. And then the, um, the sundew yeast was definitely something I've never used. So um, throwing that in there, I was really happy when that one got big. Yeah. Well, and you know, you're mentioning like in the like fruity drinks and things that pineapple mango to me that very easily goes together you know most people will equate those in the same category the strawberry is the one that is a little different but i love that you guys wanted to do something a little bit contrasting i feel like strawberry is definitely like it dips its toes into tropical but it's not like if somebody said to me is a strawberry a tropical fruit i would say no it's just it doesn't it's not the first thought but i do think it was a fun um, inclusion into this thing. The honey, also very fun. Having this kind of more tropical honey is going to keep pronouncing these flavors. I'm excited for that. And then you said, you know, the sundew ale yeast, um, also adding tropical notes. And uh, so, yeah, I'm excited to, to try this. And I love getting to see you guys kind of collaborate. That's the fun part of this whole series is seeing what you guys come up with over time. So we, we got the recipe. And uh, you, backing up a little bit, we established it. You sent me the recipe. You said, this is it. This is the final one. And so that's the card people are seeing on screen. Once we had that recipe down and ready to go, I went ahead and I'm sure you you started yours way before me. Um, I, I was really late to the party. So I think yours is like maybe two months older. You might have to correct me on this. I think it's two months older yeah. than me. Yeah, I think, I think I started in May, the middle of May. Yep. So you got some age, which that'll also be fun to see, the uh, end result of that. I was late to the party, finally got my stuff. We started by uh, the simple process. You wanted to include, you'll have to walk me through this too, because I, I thought this was interesting on why you included strawberries later. We threw that honey, the pineapple and mango, and of course yeast and water and those things in the primary. So that all went in there when that was pretty easy. You know, it's, I feel like that's standard practice. Of course, we had um, we had an inclusion of yeast nutrient, very important. And I love this too. You included some some wine tannin. Do you want to talk to us about why that was on your recipe? Yeah, uh, just for the the to back it up and really hold those flavors in inside your mouth and on your palate uh, when you're drinking it. You know, I I didn't want those to wash away real quick. I would. I, wanted those to, to hold up and um, kind of stick around for a minute so yeah uh, to help balance it the sweetness and the acidity 
man, you're killing it. <laughs> you're like, I, I just love hearing it. Cause like, I, that is like, I feel like I preach to the choir on like balance these things. And then you guys, uh, you guys come in swing and you're like, I got this. So you guys included that wine tannin and I was super excited. That went in the primary. So that went in all that fermentation. Um, sometimes people put that wine tannin in later. I've done that before. I feel like it's, uh, doesn't really matter when it goes in, but having that tannin to help is helpful, obviously. So then we let it ferment. This is where this is where my next question arises. For, we went through primary fermentation. We went ahead and racked off of that fruit, the mango and pineapple, and our starting gravity, at least my starting gravity, I believe was somewhere in the ballpark of like, 1072, oh, I gotta have my, my notes back up. Somewhere, I was a little bit below 10%. Um, I think you said specifically on there to shoot for 10%, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, I started 1070. That's so good. did you start yours at higher? Was yours higher than that? So I made a uh, addition error when I made mine and uh, I added, uh, I think half a pump too much. So. I ended up at about 11 and a half percent with mine, but I tried to dilute just a little bit with uh, some water um, at the very end, and hopefully, I think I put it down to okay. and a half or so. Yeah. Well, and you know, you got two months on me, so even that that a little bit of uh, <laughs> age is going to help give. If there is any alcohol difference there, we're going to have some more balance. So this is where we, we decided, okay, at this point, we got to add strawberries. Why did we add strawberries in the secondary um, instead of the primary? What was your guys' intent there? Um, the strawberries, uh, from my experience, and I think uh, other people in the uh, uh, chat, is that they um, blow, the flavors blow off really easily and uh, uh, through fermentation. So adding them in secondary uh, cap some of those stronger uh, strawberry flavors, and it's a softer flavor than the um, uh, pineapple and mango to begin with. So to, to get that to pronounce inside there, I think secondary was the best spot for it. Yeah, I definitely agree. And on that note, I would add that sometimes fermented strawberries can give a plasticky taste. There's something about them. I don't know what it is, but I, I've always gotten that. Anytime I fermented on strawberries, I wind up with a plasticky taste, kind of band-aidy, and I hate it. It's so gross. So I think that was a good good move for you guys too. Is it um, it eliminated that both of those problems that you mentioned right there? We added our strawberries for like I think it was a week, roughly. Um, and we went ahead and racked off of those strawberries after a week. My starting gravity was uh, 1070, and then it went down to 1.000. Of course, with fruit, you have a little bit of sugar addition, but I did not do the math of saying, well, I added eight points of sugar from my strawberries because I'm still at the homebrew level, <laughs> and I'm not really, really ready to commit to that kind of crazy math. Uh, I don't know. Did you, did you try to factor that in? Because I had no desire to. Yeah, um, one of the uh, members in the group had went on to the uh, batch folder and entered in the total desired gravity at the end and then tried to uh, roughly calculate how much of volume and uh, the fruit would add to it. And so through that little bit of math, um, that was all accounted for in the recipe itself. Good. Okay. Well, you guys did way more than me. I was just like, I'm tossing these suckers in and math, math be gone. You know, I'm this thing somewhere between nine and, you know, whatever percent <laughs> at this point, <laughs> which that's all right. Um, so we did that. We racked off and then we went ahead and added our stabilizers because we wanted to back sweeten. And so I, we did, I, I stabilized with potassium sorbate, metabisulfite. I'm sure you did too. Um, I, I'm assuming at least. And it was ready to, to back sweeten. Now, my final, why you know what was the thought process here? And I thought this was fun. You guys decided to back sweeten not with honey, but with brown sugar. So what's the intent there? Why did we go with brown sugar instead of honey? Well, the the um, cocktail itself would normally, <laughs> excuse me, normally be made with uh, rum 
and rum, I, I believe, is traditionally made with the form of uh, molasses. Um, I, I don't know that whole process or anything, but uh, the adding the um, brown sugar, it has molasses inside there, and so hopefully going to bring some of those uh, romantic uh, flavors into that. Mm. Uh, shooting the uh, ABV up uh, to a, a point where people might want to stick Man, I love that. I love that. Um, I don't think I knew that, why you guys chose that. Part of this process has been me looking at the recipe and saying like, well, okay, well, I'm going to trust it. First of all, I'm going to do it. Regardless, you guys could have said to throw a, you know, 10 sardines in and I would have probably still done it. Uh, but but hearing like the, the thought process as it grows, that's so, super cool. We back sweetened with brown sugar. I had to back sweeten. I don't. I felt like I threw so much brown sugar in. It was a pound of brown sugar for this like one gallon of mead. It, it felt like excessive on my end because we uh, were shooting specifically for ten twenty gravity. I believe was the final, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So, did you feel like you were adding a lot of brown sugar? Because I definitely. I was like pouring this thing in i was like oh my gosh like i need to stop this like feels like too much but it was just right yeah yeah no there was a lot i i think the hardest part of that whole ordeal was getting it through the funnel and into the carboy that was yeah. cool. it changed that the really pretty color of the mead too because before it was like um i mean it had vibrancy and stuff like that and then after mm -hmm. all that brown sugar it became just kind of a muddy brown kind of mead color which you know it's, it's all right it's not the end of the world but change the color final gravity was 10 20. well i'll let that set for a couple more days because of course you want to make sure it's stabilized and not going to referment and then we bottled it which is very necessary and robert has um we'll talk about this in a moment he did some extra stuff to his he added some extra flavor components but first let's taste this thing we have both of our meads here we have shared a bottle with each other and uh, Robert, again, he doesn't have his, he has mine right now, and we'll talk about his extra adventures he's been on. Um, but let's go ahead and taste him. I'm going to open up, since I have a bottle of yours, I'm actually going to open yours first, if you don't mind. Yeah. I am very curious. I don't mind taste like. I'm going to see what yours tastes like first. Let's see. Ooh, yours kept the color. Oh man, you're gonna be so disappointed when you, you see the color on mine. It changed to a, like almost where I was like, crap, did I oxidize this thing? And I don't think I did, but um, it changed the color greatly. This is beautiful. Holy cow. Look at that color. Fantastic. Um, That's exactly what I thought it'd be. It is so tropical fruity, so much uh, mango on the nose. And then uh, like a lot of strawberry too, but not, like I said, the plastic strawberry, which is very good. Man, it's like a candle. This is so fragrant. Awesome. Ooh, what was your final gravity? I don't remember if we agreed on the same one. Uh, I, it should be right around that uh, 1020. 1020? Uh, what, one thing that yeah. um, I think we'll notice the differences between ours is I don't know where the acidity comes from, but I, th I feel like yours might be a little more acidic than mine, which is not a bad thing. It just makes that sweetness level dial feel like mine might feel higher than t 1020. Um, that's why I asked that, because my first thought was like, is this 1020, but it's just a little more acidic. Yeah, that's fantastic. The, the um, pineapple and mango are way more prominent on the flavor. The strawberry is uh, very prominent on the nose and has some flavor element but it does have a little more uh, acidity here that balances that sweetness like we talked about so that's good and it does have a full body it's very very good looking so this is killer man nice job awesome. thank you dude okay well so i i get the luxury of comparing the two right now um but let's go and open up mine you'll get to see the all color right. change hope there was no i was worried somehow there's gonna be some hiss or something that happens 
That's what I was listening for when you opened my mind. Ooh, okay. Maybe I don't remember my yeah, color it's completely. Funky. It's a little more brown. Look at a little more of that. A, a little darker, uh, a little more amber uh, color to it. Uh-huh. So, but still clear and, and uh, looks very appetizing. Ooh. Okay. So I want you, because again, I've tasted this before and I know what it tastes like. I want you to give us some notes. What are you catching from this? Okay. Up those, I, I get some strawberry. That definitely hits there right in the front. But then the um, pineapple. The pineapple hits me more than the mango does in that. The nose. So. Yeah, I feel like the noses are more. They're different in that one's more bright. Yours is a little more bright than mine. It's interesting. But it smells great. You ready to try it? Let's go for it. Mm. Definitely a good body to it. I mean, it, it definitely clicks right away. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, it does taste a little bit sweeter than the one that I made. So I wonder if I made a uh, calculation error. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, you, th um, you, you think, think that it was... Sugar. Hmm. So you're saying you think that the you added less brown sugar than you needed to, or or more? I, I may have added less uh, brown sugar. So it's at forty six percent of every like white sugar. So it's not that I I calculated it wrong and added a little bit. Little bit. I the see. the strawberries there, and then uh, again the. Um, pineapple and then i feel like the mango kind of picks up the the back side of it, mm -hmm. but, it but it's very delicious yeah I, I think and again i i feel like i have the luxury we'll talk about your um extra experimentation here in a moment what the biggest difference is between our two is uh, i do think like i said that acidity i do think it has sweetness here yours has a, has the sweetness which is nice but it, that um yields to more brightness this is much a, a more brighter Pops more pineapple and um, mm -hmm. maybe a little more mango than mine. And mine has a lot more strawberry side. And uh, because of that sweetness, I think some of that, some of the mango pops through, but it's just a little warmer. And I like both of them. That's what's mm -hmm. kind of fun. I almost think like a mixture of the two, having a little bit of that brightness in mine would help the pineapple pop. And it'd be like the full package of uh this tropical mead but yours is super good um it's it's just so fun to do the same recipe and end up with a somewhat different result right right i wonder if the if you have a stronger strawberry uh flavor to yours i wonder if that's what attributes the the color but mm -hmm. did you mention that it was a lighter color before you added the brown sugar so? yeah it was if I'm not mistaken, I don't know. I'm, I got to go back to my video. But I think it was closer to your color. It might have had a little bit of red element in there. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'll put it on screen for people to see. But I do feel like the the brown sugar definitely changed the color a little bit with this one. Not a bad thing, though. Mm -hmm. It just changed it up. So you did some extra experimentation. Um, the reason you're not able to drink a, well, I'm going to call it an original version of yours is because you added some stuff to the carboy. So what did you add to yours to add some more pro profile? Yeah. So, uh, I forgot to, after I got yours bottled that I was just going to let it sit for a little bit and then, uh, bottle a couple more bottles. And I went ahead and added my spiced rum, uh, to the whole carboy and, uh, then it's no longer able to pull a bottle or two of the original recipe off. Uh, for, for tasting video, so I have here the um, the rum fortified version of it, Ooh. and definitely hits strong on the the rum nose uh, or rum notes rather. Um, but I, I get the tropical um, essence to it, and it just it, it definitely is a different drink than the other two. Yeah. Well, so how much, when you fortify, you know, sometimes people add um, 
an outrageous amount, so to speak, of, of uh, some sort of spirit. So how much did you add to that one in specific? Did you have a, a amount or did you go by taste or what did you do there? Um, so I set up a couple of tasters and I ended up trialing three, four, and five parts of the mead to one part of rum. And what I ended up enjoying was uh, about a four and a half parts mead to one part rum. Okay. So well, that was a race. Yeah. Point. Interesting. I love that you like just t- testing things and not just. I mean, I'm I'm very guilty of this. Let me be clear. Throwing things in and just like hail mary. I hope this works. We should all be more committed to doing that. Just it, it literally what you did probably took maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes of just like here's a little bit of this, here's a little bit of this, and you know just kind of partitioning things out because then you had real data. So I, I love. <laughs> You guys are just so scientific, and you do things way better than way better than me quite often, and that that's a great moment right there. Way better than I. Um, I'm a lazy brewer in a lot of ways, so that's fun though. So if you are interested in fortifying with some extra flavors, um, it sounds like rum is a good flavor to add on top of this, of course. Uh, and I'm assuming you picked that one because of the cocktail that you talked about at the beginning, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Well, I I don't have any left right now for me to fortify. Otherwise, I would maybe I have some rum somewhere in the room. I might, you know, after this, kind of dose mine a little bit and see what's going to happen with it. But this whole mead is really, really good. You guys did a fantastic job of, of curating something that is approachable. I think the recipe card people will see on screen right now is something that you could go to Walmart, you could go to Target, you could go to wherever and pick up. I mean, there's always frozen. I used all frozen, frozen pineapple. Fro- uh, I didn't use frozen mango. I've got fresh mango. Um, that was a little bit of a pain. Frozen strawberries. The sundew ale yeast is a bit hard to use. Um, the 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 factor we didn't talk about here is I used k- uh, k- Voss. Oh gosh, I already forgot. I used Kvike. K- Hornendal for my uh, yeast instead because I didn't have that sundew available. So there are options if you're looking at the recipe going, well, I can't get sundew ale yeast. That's fine. Um, Kvike strains sometimes put off a more tropical ester at higher temps. So that's an easy way to do that. There are other yeast that do the same thing. The citrus honey, I do think that's important but I think that you could also manage to probably use a more um, wildflower clover honey base uh, honey, and then really just trying to lean into maybe more fruit elements in that regard if you wanted to make this. So you guys have done a fantastic job. And I have some great news for you, Robert. I don't know, I think you said you'd seen these videos before, but Mm -hmm. first of all, I wanna say thank you for um, curating a fun, uh, mead and a fun video here. I am going to give you 50 bucks for your hard work and dedication towards uh, this past, I don't know, it's like six months? This one's been a long one because I've been kind of lazy with it, honestly. Um, 50 bucks <laughs> and I want to extend an invitation to everybody watching here to join the Discord, step one, and if you would like to be a part of the Discord mead series, if you would like to lead the discord mead series just like robert did you can hop into specifically we have two channels we have a discord a discord mead discussions channel where robert is going to be taking uh the the i guess ideas or however he wants to do this he's going to pick the next discord mead leader so your your goal is to get on discord find that channel Tag Robert, which is his tag is at, at Bees Muted More, and go ahead and shoot your shot to say why you think you should do this. And you might have to butter him up a little bit, send him five bucks, you know, do whatever you need to get yourself in there a little further, share some mead with them, but um, try to, to talk about what you want to do with the next Discord mead, and he'll pick a leader for the next one within the week this is posted. So I hope that people are. I'm excited to do this. The next one, of course, is number eight, and we're just going to keep doing these. So I'm excited for this. 
Robert, thank you for um, for doing this. Thank you for being patient with me. And um, I know you started yours way earlier than me, so I'm sure there was a point where you were like, is he gonna ever make this stupid mead? And <laughs> here I am, here we did it. We finally did it. <laughs> so Robert, thank you. Uh, you can find him on the Discord at Bees Mead and more. And um, I, again, go check us out over there. Talk to him. Talk to about talk about your next idea for the Discord Mead series, and we will see you over there. So with that, Robert, we got to cheers with a mead because this is this is what we do. So cheers, everybody. We'll see you in the Discord. Cheers. Yeah.